Hey everybody, this week on the Ink 12, we're taking a look at a sample of Tasia Momo that I picked up from Andrew Bailey over on the Pen Addict Slack. I must say, this has to be one of the pinkest of pink inks that I have ever seen. Um, that being said, though, I've only got these two pink inks to go off of, and even Dream Ink Unicorn here isn't much of a pink as much as it is a uh, shading and shimmering light purple. Whereas Tasia Momo is kind of a 80s neon pink kind of thing, which in and of itself makes it a very interesting ink to go off of. That being said, though, since I really only have these two pink inks to go off of, it may be best to take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt or a boulder of salt, whatever the case may be. Either way, let's go ahead and take a look at Tasia Momo and do a writing sample. And for this writing sample, we're going to be using my Pilot Elite um, with the broad gold nib. It's a really good combination. Um, I've had the ink in here now for about a week and a half, and they seem to fit very well with each other. And for the paper, we're going to be using, instead of Rhodia dot pad, we're going to be using number 16 Rhodia lined paper. Same quality of paper, um, but if you did watch my review on the multiple papers that I use, then you'll know the difference at least that I see in the two papers. But let's go ahead and get into the writing sample itself. Now, like I was saying, the part about this combination I like is the flow and the color that I get when I combine this particular nib and the ink itself. It gives just a little bit of shading, but it helps the ink maintain a very good flow and a very even keel overall. And let's go ahead and take a look at the X's figure eights cross hatches and this time around I'm going to go ahead and do a color swipe early instead of later on. As you can see there on the color swipe, um, I would say it's a medium, not quite medium wet, so a good solid medium ink as far as the flow is concerned. Now let's go ahead and bring it up here and take a little bit of a closer look now that we've done some writing with it. You can see what I was saying there about the flow. It's definitely a good medium flow. And you can see a little bit more of the shading now. Um, the darker spots have a really nice vibrancy to them, whereas the lighter spots kind of give you that neon pink feel from the 80s. Um, or at least that's how it feels to me. You know, on closer look with the... Uh, little swipe there. I'm actually going to downgrade this to more of a medium dry than a flat medium ink, come to think of it. Because I'm still seeing a lot of definition of the up and down strokes in there. But let's go ahead and move on to the dry time now. Uh, helps if I write with the nib the right way instead of completely on its side. So that was the one second. And here we go with the five second test. Now let's go ahead and do a 10 second test here. Now I'm not seeing much improvement, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a 20 second test. You know, I'm... <laughs> I'm on the fence here. I want to say it's a medium dry ink, but looking at this dry time, I mean, I don't know. 
Maybe it is a solid medium that likes to masquerade? I think we're going to have to wait to see during the water sample what's going on with that line definition during the swipes and during this dry time. I mean, even at 20 seconds, there was a little bit of ink release there from the line, but overall not bad. It's a really well behaved ink, just slow drying, which is also kind of weird. I've been using this ink at work and I've had no drying issues. so. Maybe it's just the Rhodia paper, but I haven't had any of the issues with that at work on the HP paper I've been using. So let's go ahead, though, and move on to the color with, you know, shading it in with the pen and doing a ink drop with the syringe. I really need to replace that syringe. It's starting to get stuck. And as you can see, it went from more of ink drips to something resembling a Gallagher painting. I know Gallagher wasn't a painter, but still, I'd imagine if he worked with watermelons and canvas that that's kind of what it would look like. And then with the swab, it's back to being a tame pink. Look at that ink running, though. It's not that viscous of an ink compared to some of the others. I'm barely putting any angle on the paper, and it is just running. So a very, very fluid ink here. And looking at the color from one set to the other, like over here on the left with the um, with the pen marking, and then over on the right hand side with the swabs, and then just the vast color difference that you get on the darker spots with the splatter. I don't know. I mean, I think there's a little bit more to this ink than I'm giving it credit for, but I've only been using it for a week and a half, so who knows? Let's go ahead, though, and move on to the water sample. And for this, we've got a bulb syringe filled with piping hot water. Let's go ahead and apply it liberally to the paper. And by liberally, I mean, let's go ahead and soak the paper. And we're going to let it sit there for a few seconds, kind of mimicking a worst case scenario here where, oh, I don't know, you drop your messenger bag into a lake or you spill an entire cup of tea on it. You know, things happen. And then we're going to go ahead and use a handy shop towel here to go ahead and try to clean up that entire piece of paper. And by clean up, I mean make an inky mess because I highly doubt this is really going to pick anything up. As you can see, we got quite a bit of water on there. All right, so let's take a look at the carnage. And that's actually kind of surprising. So that explains the line definition that we were getting earlier. I was wondering what was going on there, but looking at the results from the water test here, everything is still fairly legible, and that was not a small amount of water at all. So you're getting some pseudo permanence, and that's actually pretty cool. I, I didn't expect that from the water test here. Definitely a surprise. And I actually kind of like the washout that it did there on the bottom where I did the uh, swab. I may have to try that on some artwork later on. But let's go ahead and clean up from the water test and go into my overall thoughts for the ink. So let's go ahead and try to make these final thoughts a little less all over the place as I'm starting to feel with this ink. On one hand, it's an awkward color that I'm not used to using, and I don't know, just overall it's not something I would normally see myself using, and then of course I end up using an orange ink a couple weeks ago, and there you go, now it's all topsy-turvy. But on the other hand, this ink behaves very well in a professional setting, it fits into my office quite well, 
And after that water test, which was kind of a shock to me, I'm really impressed with how it's holding up. All in all, for one of the more exotic colors that I have, I like it. And I'm really glad that Andrew Bailey over on Slack sent me this sample so I could get used to a rather interesting ink that honestly I think would make a good match for anyone's collection. Speaking of which, if you want to add it to your collection, head on over to penchley.com where you can pick up a 40 mil bottle for $12. And if you go up to the radio podcast link at the top of the page, after selecting whichever color you want, and enter the code INK12 in the How You Heard About Us section, that'll unlock a site-wide 10% off, and yes, that really is site-wide, 10% off of everything in store. All in all, I'd say Tasio Momo is an ink that you really want to try. I'm glad I did. But that's going to wrap up this review, so if you liked it, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Either way, though, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, and follow the channel over on Twitter and Instagram at The Inkdwell, or support the channel at patreon.com slash The Inkdwell. That's going to do it for this week. Till next time, see you later. Later.